All right, uh, bonsoir. Um, je m'appelle Robert uh, et je ne parle pas français très bien, so I will switch to English. Um, what am I doing here? Uh, I am a developer advocate for Google, so just to um, differentiate that from the other terms that are flying out there, like technical evangelist and developer, developer evangelist, uh, what we are doing is really that we are working bi-directional, so we advocate for you guys um, into the company and we advocate from the product teams outside so that you basically learn things and um, know how to use our products the best or also the products that we open source. But also if you have any feedback and you say like, this is complicated to use, um, I run into the same thing uh, over and over again, then please feel free to connect to us and tell us so that we know and we can fix it. Uh, one of the channels that you can use is Hosti Hosti uh, in Twitter or in GitHub as well. All right, what are we gonna talk about today a little bit? Um, and this session is, I know, tools in action, so I gonna go there soon. Um, so we talk about Apache Beam. I wanna show a little bit about Apache Beam and uh, who in the room here has done something with Apache Beam before? Okay, who has heard about Apache Beam before? Cool. Um, so that's pretty nice. Uh, so I think we have a good crowd in terms of like that. I no don't need to go too much into the detail what uh, what it's all about. But what's really important about Apache Beam, it's uh, portable parallel data processing. So we really aim with Apache Beam to build one model for batch and stream processing. And I will talk about a little bit how we're going to do that. It also separates clearly between the processing logic, so building your pipelines, uh, writing them in code, and how and where you run them. So we have multiple different kind of runners where you can uh, execute Apache Beam pipelines on. Um, what I usually do is like when I talk about Apache Beam is like how the whole history is, but that would basically fill the 30 minutes and wouldn't show you. But I want to make one statement here to that slide, and that is most of the people agree that the MapReduce paper basically kicked off a whole like world of big data processing and how we, how we manage a lot of data and how we calculate uh, things with that. Um, now, what Google didn't do, they didn't throw a lot of code over the wall, they threw a lot of papers over the wall. And luckily, and we are very happy about that, the open source community picked up a lot of them, implemented that, and even iterated on that and uh, innovated on, on top of those. So that's really great. Now what we are aiming with, with Apache Beam is to connect these two worlds again and let you benefit from the innovations that we have done inside on Google um, in kind of like a closed um, ecosystem. So as mentioned before, you can run Apache Beam pipelines on a, a lot of different products. Um, I got to show how to run them on Google Cloud Dataflow, but you can also run them on Flink or on Spark or on Apex. And I even read that um, there's a gear pump runner in the works as well. So how can you get started with Apache um, Beam? So just like beam.apache.org is your first um, stop. And then if you want to, it's very easy to run them on Dataflow. So you don't need to do anything. It's all managed for you. If you have an existing Flink or Spark cluster, you can also run them on your existing clusters. To get started with Dataflow, there's a uh, starter archetype um, which you can use to do a starter pipeline. And that looks something like this. So the real estate that I have in my, my monitor reduced dramatically when I plugged in the HMI cable. So I hope I can still show um, the code. So this is basically what gets generated when you create a project with that starter archetype. And very simple, it basically shows you how you create a pipeline from the arguments that you give through the command line arguments. And then you can either use a standard standard options validator, or you can build your customs and I uh, custom options validator, and I show that in a minute. And then we basically create a pipeline, uh, apply like everything works on so-called p collections, which are collections that can be parallel processed. 
And here we create one of those P collections just in code, basically, where we add two elements, hello and world. And then we have a, a simple functions, which is basically a parallel do function written here in Lambda, um, Java 8 notation. And you basically say, OK, all like each element I want to uh, transform to uppercase. And then I basically just write um, that to log like with another, that's basically the other one is the is Java 7 way of um, processing element by element. All right, so how does that look like in code? And we can run that really quick. So basically you use Maven. Um, who are the fans of Maven here? All right, who's Gradle fan? All right, you're alone. <laughs> um, all right, so you use very simple Maven package and Maven compile and then exec Java and you give your uh, runtime arguments. I have like shown down there, they just named the job basically. And then it uh, does all its stuff and you see down here in the, in the logs that I have now my uppercase hello world. So that's like very simple how you get started with, with Apache Beam. All right, but we are here today for talking about the New York City Taxi Rights public data set. So first, what I want to show is the um, open data. So New York City uh, has a lot of the open data that they share, and you can go to the opendata.cityofnewyork.us web page and browse and everything. But the nice thing is actually we have all of this also in BigQuery. So many of the public data sets that are available are available in BigQuery. And that's what we use basically as like our source when we build the public stream. So what kind of data do you have in, in this data set? So if we go to trips, we basically see, can go here the schema, one second. Oh, let me just close this. Um, so here you see the schema that this data has. So basically a vendor ID, pickup, date, time, things like that. Rates, um, how much uh, the distance of the trip was. A lot of information for each of the rights that they have. Now the um, information that you have in here is basically one data or one row per, per trip. Um, and since it has like a start location and an end location, what we basically did for the public pub substream is taking this and taking the Google Maps API and let like let that give us a route and then basically extrapolated points um, between the two points. Um, now we can basically query this table. Um, oh, now my query is gone. But you saw it earlier. Basically, there's a lot of like very interesting data in, in this data set. So one of the things that I want to show is, for instance, where Passenger, let me see if that's here. Yeah, passenger count. Let's say above 10. And if you run this query, it runs over 130 gigabyte, as you can see here. And you see that there are actually a lot of passenger, like a lot of taxi rides with 208 passengers in there. So that are really fat fingers. Um, and I wonder what kind of cars they have. That's even more the capacity than, than a bus has in, in New York. So there's a lot of like weird kind of data in there. Um, some of that we filtered out for the public uh, pub subset. So now, let me go back to the full screen. Um, so we took that basically and in January uh, we publicize the public stream, so basically as kind of like a training um, stream to you learn how to work with Apache Beam. So you have three, <coughs> you can actually uh, find all of these links uh, with your favorite research engine, that can be from anybody. And um, there are three locations where which are interesting. So the, the announcement is that blog post that you find here which basically talks about um, how what we did and like the uh, the related code lab that we offer for this. So, <coughs> if you want to, you have these this code lab here, which you find when you Google for it, and that walks you through the steps how to get started with Apache Beam, and how how to work with it. All right, everything, all of this is also available on our on our uh, GitHub repository. So when you go here, you have in the README all the links as well for the code lab where it is and um, 
please feel free to give any kinds of suggestions for the code. You are the Java experts. Um, I'm not like the top-notch expert, definitely not. All right. Cool. So what are we going to do today? I just want to repeat a little bit about the uh, the uh, beam model because it's important to to make this differentiations to to work with it an, in a nice way. So the beam model basically asks four questions uh, for your data to be able to process uh, it and cr um, result like get correct results. So the first thing is what you do is or what it asks is like what are you computing? So what are you doing with your data? So you can do things like filtering for like element wise. You can do aggregation, so you like group it in, in Windows and do aggregations, or you can do a combination on of all of these. So a very simple one is for instance filtering. And I have a, a stream that is like the public PubSub stream that we have for the New York City data emits between 400 to 3,000 messages per per second. So you have to deal with that somehow. And one of the best ways, of course, is to do filtering or aggregation. So there are a couple uh, of ways to, to do the aggregation. So as soon as you do aggregations, you need some kind of boundaries to do your aggregations over. And there are like a ca um, different ways to, to do these uh, windows. So one of the standard ways, which a lot of the systems out there are supporting is Windows based on when the events are arriving at your system. So that's basically processing time-based Windows, where when the event comes in, um, we basically just put boundaries around it and then do aggregations around these Windows. Now this has a problem. And the problem is if you, for instance, support offline um, game, you have like an offline game and um, offline game support, and the events from that game that the person does when it, it play, uh, the person plays offline may come into your system at a, at a delayed time. So now you may calculate wrong results for your windows. That's why we differentiate within Apache Beam these two things, like when an event occurred and when the event actually arrives in the system for processing. So we make this differentiation between processing time and event time. So that way, like when we do this uh, differentiation, we can actually put these events in the right windows and calculate correct results based on the event time when they occurred. And you can do things also like session windows where you basically say like, okay, I want to know like what my user journey was from X to Y and put all this into one window. I explained it a little bit uh, already. So if you look at this graph, basically showing processing time on the y-axis and event time on the x-axis, everything which happens under the dashed line, uh, if you find a point there, if you, if you know how to calculate that, then please let me know. I, I can get you hooked up to a really, really good paycheck. Um, the reason is, like everything below the dashed line is in the future. So if you, if you basically would discover an event before it actually happened, or you would, would be able to process an event before it actually happened, that is um, there. Now you see this red line, which basically is like a watermark, and that watermark describes like how behind your system is processing things, or how like delayed elements are coming into your system. And the further it's away from the dashed line, basically the further is the delay between the event happened and the event being processed. All right, so let's have a look at a little bit of code. So I, I already explained that one of the simple thing is doing actually filtering of, of your data. <coughs> now what I want to show you what we actually have as a data point in our stream is this here. So we wrote the stream feeder in Go, which basically picks up from, from um, a, like a data set that we prepared with calculating and interpolating the, the map routes, and then which was originally coming from BigQuery. And then we, we basically process or we basically emit a point for each point in our map. And that has like a write ID, so that I identify the writes so that we can group them together. 
uh, it has a point, like a point in that uh, right that we are emitting. It has the location of that point that we are emitting at that point, a timestamp, a meter reading, and a meter in increment, which basically shows us, like, okay, uh, where at which price are we right now? And um, it shows us a write status. A write status is basically it gives us the notation of like this write started right now or this write then ended, and the passenger count. So that's what we're sending as a JSON message to PubSub. And PubSub has a nice thing that it actually also can take some metadata, which helps data flow to see if the data is complete for a certain window that we are processing. So we are also attaching a timestamp as a metadata to our message that we send to PubSub. And that basically helps heuristics for the watermark that you saw earlier. Now, one of the simplest thing to do is basically filtering. So what I'm doing here in this code, and let me make that a little bigger, is first thing I have, uh, as you can see, a custom pipeline options. So what is this custom pipeline option? This custom pipeline option basically just gives us the possibility to add some uh, options to our runner. And why am I doing this here? So I want to know like what are what is the source topic where I'm reading from, and also I want to know where I should send this data that I'm calculating, like my aggregations or my filtered writes. So I'm added things like a source project, a source topic, and a sync project and a sync topic to my um, pipeline options. Now when I'm running this, I'm taking this information, as you can see here, and I'm starting my pipeline, and I'm taking that information and basically say here that I want to run, uh, want to read from PubSub, and I'm filling these options in, and then I'm basically just doing like a very simple pass-through. So right now we have three different kinds of pass-through. W the first one is basically um, a parallel do Java 7. So you can program that in Java 7 if you want to. Um, what does the pass-through do? It doesn't do anything special. It basically takes the element from the process context and just emits it to the process, as you can see here. So we don't do anything special. We don't do any filtering. You also have, um, you can also use lambda notation if you want to. So in the version two, as you can see, um, we use map elements. Now a map elements has the restriction that you have to emit an, an element. So you have like basically one to one. And um, if you have, like if you want to do a filter, you might not want to emit an element every time. So what you can use is flat map, flat maps in this case, where it actually expects a list that you return or like an iteratable and you return either an element in that list or an empty list. Now, um, unfortunately, we cannot infer the, uh, the type, so we have to say, we have to give the type that is returned there. And as the last step, what we are doing is we are writing this to PubSub. Now, if we're looking at um, how that looks in our data flow job, I have here a data flow job that is exactly that that I just showed and it shows you that it's running, and it should also show at a, in a second like how many elements it's processing. So basically, you can look at all the things that uh, it's doing here. And let's have a look at the visualization, how that looks like. So here are every all the writes, and we have a visualization that can only like handle about 1,000, 2,000 points per, per second. So it sh usually, um, let me see, unfortunately it's not in here. Yeah, it's too small the screen. So, like further down, it basically has a text field where it says like this is too much data. I cannot handle that data, which basically means okay, we have to do something about this. Uh, my my receiving system cannot handle the data from that stream. So we have to we have to do uh, something about this. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to add some filtering here. So I'm gonna go and say okay, I wanna have all the taxis which have at least two people. So just filter out all the taxis which only have one, one passenger. And the only thing that I did here to add this, I used in this case the Java 8 notation lambda, where like I basically just pick out the passenger count from my PubSub message, check if it has more than one and add it to the list or not. So that's like the single change that I did. 
And if we check on the um, little passengers and start fetching here, it will thin out a lot. So let me show this here. So we see here um, this running. And you can see that it somewhat uh, thins out. The thing is, there's actually a caveat here. The first thing that I showed you with the all rights, I used the public pops up um, f um, stream. For this, I'm actually using a six times like accelerated stre um, stream, which basically means I emit from like 2000 to 15, almost 20,000 points per second. So I'm actually filtering a lot here. And as you can see here, I'm writing about 1,000, 2,000 points still to pops up as like my receiving team, um, receiving topic. Now, I still want to um, investigate a little bit further in my data and want to know like, hey, like where are the hotspot in, in New York where I basically, I want to see like where the hotspot f with a lot of like full ta taxis, taxis are. So in this case, um, here we did only filtering, but if I want to basically see hotspots of where a lot of tax full taxis are, I need to do a grouping, I need to do an aggregation. So let's have a look at the full taxi hotspots. So what am I doing here is basically I'm adding s some of the notations that we went through with the questions. So I need basically some boundaries for doing my aggregation. In this case, I'm choosing a window of one second as a boundary. And then I need a key for these windows. In this case, I mark the rights uh, in a location, and what my mark rights does is nothing else than it sh basically normalizes on a 500, roughly 500 meter circle, um, all the rights that are coming in at that moment and point, and then basically uh, gives that as a key. And then every second, since I say like my my windows are fixed, I'm emitting every second resu result from this. So this is my transform rights, which is basically doing the group by. So I or like the transformation from the group by. So this here is doing the group by for each of the, uh, it's a standard uh, function. So you just do count per key. And it does that for every windy window that we are emitting. It just does the count of the elements and gives that uh, back for every key. So if you look at the website, how that looks like, we have the full taxis and we have to wait a second so basically now you will see like hotspot where where basically a lot of taxis are coming up it will take a little bit till that normalizes Oops. if the stream is still running let's have a look yeah so as you can see here we getting about 90,000 elements even in there for marking. And then we're counting and giving out like 220. So that's what the aggregation can do here. And then what that does it look like? Looks like that. Y so you see, for instance, a lot of um, taxis coming, full taxis being at the airports, and of course, a lot of full taxis being in, in Manhattan. This time, what it's showing right now should be like evening time, roughly. All right, as the last, what I want to show is um, basically show me the money. So in this case, I want to have in my display an estimated like a running meter where I want to see like, okay, what are what is like my running rate of dollars that I'm earning per minute? And I want to uh, like, I want to have an estimate uh, emitted. And then I want to know when actually final value was calculated and emitted uh, for my sort uh, for my sync project. So how am I doing this? So we already saw that we can window elements that are receiving in our system into like time frames. In this case, a window within one minute. So I want to have my running rate per minute, but I want to have values like um, this building up every second. So the way that I'm doing this is with with triggers. 
In this case, I choose I use two triggers. Like the one, the first one from my estimates is a so-called early firing trigger. So this trigger emits basically every second while the window window is building up, while it's collecting data for one minute. Then once this window, then once we have the data where we are confident, basically when we pass the watermark that we say like, okay, uh, we believe that we have all the data now for that one minute window. Then we get a uh, trigger which basically says like, this is the um, real like uh, value. It basically the state of this is on time. It's the on time trigger which tells us, okay, this is, uh, we believe we have all the data. Now, as showed earlier, it can happen that uh, data even comes in much, much later than that. At some point, we, we have to close the window to, to calculate the value. Otherwise, we would keep hundreds and thousands of windows open. So what we do is basically we have so-called late f triggers, which, ha uh, which are fired when data comes in late after we actually um, already emitted a value for this, for this window. Now we cannot keep them even if we already said like we have like thi we believe this is the value for that window. We cannot keep them around forever because we would just run out of out of memory with this window. So we have to basically also give uh, Apache Beam the pipeline or these windows a notation of like when it's fine to close them and just throw in throw them away. And that is the with allowed lateness, which basically tells, okay, like keep this window open for five more minutes after you think we have all the data. Once that is uh, passed, then we basically can throw away that window and all the data which comes in after that um, is unfortunately lost. So the depending on like how accurate the results you need, you can open uh, like have that longer that window. So how does that look like in in our visualizer? And all of these uh, scenarios are also in the in the code lab. What's also important here to say is that these um, pipelines are actually written already with the new, currently in beta, Dataflow SDK 2.00 beta 3, which uses the Apache Beam core um, structures. So that's basically the code that I'm written here you can directly use with other other runners. Before that, we had our own notation with the Dataflow SDK, and there are some breaking changes between the Dataflow SDK 1.x and the, the new um, 2.x. So as you can see here, uh, it's a little small, but you see here the windows that are coming up, and all the black ones that you see is basically, that's my run rate here right now, like around 30,000 dollars per minute um, that my taxi company is earning. And all the black ones are basically the ones where we have the on-time trigger result, where we believe we have all the data. All the other ones, the grades that you see, we didn't receive yet in um, the on-time trigger result, so we still keep them open and say like, hey, like this is still processing. And you see that especially in, in, in the last ones. All right. Um, with that, thank you very much for the intention and I'm open for any kinds of questions if you have.